Hello again, it's great to be with you. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Uh, we're working our way through Paul's letters to the uh, church at Thessalonica. Uh, currently we're in uh, the second letter, first chapter, and today we're going to look at verses 5 through to 10, where Paul writes this. He says, All this is evidence that God's judgment is right, and as a result you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled, and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might on the day that he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marvelled at among all those who have believed. This includes you, because you believed our testimony to you. This is quite a difficult passage, and, and there's some things going on here that are hard to see. But we should remember that although Paul had spent the opening part of his letter encouraging his audience and blessing their steadfast faith, steadfast faith, he was doing that because, although we can't, uh, don't have a copy of it, it seems fairly clear that they had written to him or communicated somehow that they were being persecuted by others from outside of the church, non-Christians who wanted to see this new community of believers demolished. You know, nowadays we live in, a, in the comparative luxury of freedom to worship God without the threat of persecution from others. There are some places in life and in society where some people object to us expressing our faith publicly, but we are, for the most part, free to worship as we wish. The same cannot be said of all places around the world. There are many countries where people aren't free to worship God, or even, in some cases, to talk about him. Paul's words here tell us that in the fullness of time, we are to let God to worry about those who persecute our brothers and sisters in Christ. Their fate has already been sealed. Our call is to stay true to our faith and to our knowledge of Jesus. It's to hold fast to our faith, to not let it go. And although he doesn't express it in direct terms, it's also to pray for those who live under the threat of their uh, threat, threat because of their uh, faith in Jesus. So I thought today may be a good day just to hold up the persecuted church um, before God. So let's do that in prayer now. Lord God, we hold before you today all of our brothers and sisters around the world who live under persecution or the threat of persecution from others because of their faith in you. Lord, we ask for your hand of protection to be over them. We ask for an outpouring of your spirit upon those who would persecute them and that those in captivity or who have suffered harm would be released and restored in Jesus' name. So Lord, would you come today? Would you pour out your spirit and bless those who struggle? We ask in Jesus' name and for the glory of your kingdom. Amen. Have a great day.